There must be some kind of way out of here Say the joker to the thief There's too much confusion I can't get no relief You have no value. I mean, you can't value suffering. There's nothing else to value. That's interesting that you're arguing that there is some objective value in the universe to argue otherwise would be sociopathic. Uh, that's interesting that you've, that you've gone there. Um, so, I mean, you say that a rock is invaluable, but it made me think of, you know, the Earth as a whole. Do you think the Earth as a whole is an organism of some sort, or do you think it is ultimately just a rock with this slime living around it? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, that's the sloppy way to say it, but yes, it does. a rock with slime. There's no nervous system. There's no evidence of a... Uh, computer processor built into it. We have evidence. We have a we have a brain. Well, what if the human the electronic infrastructure is is the nervous system of of this rock? What if what is the human internet uh, the electronic infrastructure that we've built around the planet? What if that's the nervous? There's system? no there's no there's no way you can look at that blueprint and say well that human infrastructure is doing logic or that human infrastructure has a neural net or that human is it's not it's 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 sloppy and stupid it's just animals you know eating and shitting so you can't call that a neural net you can't call that How capable. Did our brain evolve? I mean, all these separate Well, styles, I mean, our brain organized. evolved to do rational thought. That's what it was for, because it had to. It had to improve our capacity to operate in the environment. If it didn't make us stronger, uh, then it wasn't going to be rewarded and kept. Yeah. So we can understand why our brain would develop, but there's no reason to believe an Earth needs a brain. Gary, do you think that um, this, the Internet, the way it's complexifying um, and connecting people, same way that neurons kind of connect and fire off different ideas. Um, is it possible that this cyber network is evolving in like a global scene? Is and if it is, is it going towards some great, some bigger intelligence, some more fa uh, complex, faster connections, better this, better that? Is it evolving on a yeah, macro scale? Well, 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 yeah, we might discover the eighth ingredient for the special sauce, and that's what we might do with it. Okay, I mean. <laughs> But, you know, look, I like technology. I like that the memes can evolve much quicker in this environment. So this is great. I mean, we can evolve human psychology and the memes much quicker in this environment. So, yes, it's great for that. So, but the bottom line is you keep thinking intelligence has some place to go. Intelligence is only going to make us better janitors. There's no other job to have in the universe but being a janitor. We have, our job is to clean up the mess nature made. That's the only job our intelligence has. Well, it seems that your your job is not just cleaning it up. You seem to be an active agent of communicating, like some some interconnective. Uh, uh, are we getting feedback? Sorry, it should go away. Okay, um, but, it, but it seems like you're in the internet. People who activate actively talk and dialogue and converse on things like Stickam and, and Blog TV and and they go back and forth seem like active, uh, crucial agents in this neuronal. Uh, nervous type system that the cyber nervous system that's developing across the globe. So you seem to be an active agent, as, you know, much more. You're not like a pinky toe. I mean, we seem to be as, as commuting agents, sharing knowledge and different perspectives. Seem to be, you know, central to this this cyber uh, nervous system. How how crucial is is sharing perspectives and information for you uh, this day and age? And and what how has it how has it changed your kind of experience? just on, on everything with, with connecting with people instantly across the world and, and that kind of thing. Well, I, like I said, I think it's a good thing, but I, I'm, I think you're way overstating it. I mean, we still know what people are watching. They're watching Fred. Um, they're not, you know, they're not, they're, the meme thing ain't really in the, in the majority of the internet is not involved in this conversation, obviously. Well, so, I mean, that part's a little disappointing, but I'm just saying the potential's there. But even if it's there, like I said, you're, you're talking about this like it's some, you know, we're getting into our starship now and we're going to go on this great exploration and have all this blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. No. Go to go. It ain't going to happen. If we meet the, 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 the future, the future's just going to be more of this chasing desire thing. And so we're going to find, we're going to find more elaborate ways, better creams to rub on our nipples. But it's not going to be this, whatever, you're, whatever you think you're going, it ain't going there. Get, um, about getting away from desire, well, I mean, what if it's not the object of the game isn't necessarily getting away from desire? I mean, 
porns there on the internet, and it's it's booming. It's going to keep expanding. That's that's consistent with your philosophy. This desire game. We have urges. We need to find a way to meet those urges. If we can do it respectfully without harming others, then GG. We've kind of done the thing, right? We've we've won the game, haven't we? Well, I don't think porn is necessarily good for people, so I don't know if that's a good. No, thing. No, no. I'm saying or I'm saying meeting our needs. Uh, if you're going to find that through. Whatever kind of avenue, whether it's porn, drugs, or, or or yoga, you know, whatever. We meet our needs as long as we're not hurting anybody else meeting these needs. Um, that's well, I don't know how you can't do that. You can't you can't ride the horse and say you're not hurting the horse. All right? I mean, you can't live without being part of the inc- you know you buy stuff from China. You're part of the economy. You're part of the game, and so you have to take responsibility. That's right. We're part of the whole. There, there's no there's no way you can separate yourself enough to say. Your actions don't have consequence, therefore you can satisfy whatever desire you want. Because, you know, you have to interact with other people, you have to make promises you got to keep, and all kinds of crap like that. So it's just not that simple. Well, I like what you say, Gary, that any freedom we have has to be tempered by uh, the responsibilities that we have at the same time. I think that's, you know, oftentimes people get so um, caught up in their individuality and their desire to express themselves and get their own needs met that they forget that they actually, just by the very fact that they exist as a human being, have a responsibility to other human beings. That that's just, that's just part of the law of existence, in a, in a way. That you are responsible for others because they're equally as valuable as you are. Yeah, there's a huge implication to living. I mean, you know, every one of us, it would be great to know, but I mean, every one of us has got people run over by buses, or we've gotten people to win the lottery, or we did something else. I mean, we've had impacts we don't even, aren't even aware of. Um, and if, you know, if we extracted each one of us and we're able to see exactly how all the other people we affected are re-affected now, how their life has changed. I mean, if I marry a woman, that means some other guy isn't going to marry her. Right. You know what I mean? That means her destiny has changed. Um, so this is, life has huge implications, and we can't just sit there and be, um, you know, looking out for ourselves because everything you do is going to impact other people. So everything is connected, in other words. Very good. Of course, <laughs> no, 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 I've never argued against that. But that connection isn't a, um, a magic word. It isn't uh, to be put on a totem pole. Ah, we have connectedness. We have achieved implication. Well, I, no, just, I, mean, I that's, disagree. That's, so, that's a fact of every organism's existence, but that there's you, an implication to its existence. If you reflect on that, though, it certainly must, it forces you to change your perspective on your own identity if you realize that you are as much your own as the product of the relationships you have with all these other people. It sort of gets you, or, or I would hope, would force you out of that sort of egoic uh, trap where you think you're just an individual here to, uh, you know, get your own pleasures while you can and, you know, screw everybody else. It sort of shows you that that's a complete illusion, that your ego is constructed by your relationships with other people. So it's spiritual. Yeah, well, I, I would think most people should have acquired that very early in their life because you, you make those decisions all the time. I mean, you can pet a rabbit or you can whap it over the head with a stick. You are in control throughout your whole life of the destiny of other things. So you should be kind of humbled by that power pretty early. But I, I concede a lot of people never realize that they have any obligation to the rest of the human beings walking around, you know, or the animals. So, yes, there's a lot of people walking around who just haven't made that, haven't had that, uh, whatever you call that, revelation. All right, well, I guess that would be a, a good point to end. We were actually uh, agreeing pretty uh, substantially here. Um, but uh, we've got about 40 minutes of tape, so that should be enough to uh, edit a little bit and, uh, and post a little bit later today. Yep. But, uh, yeah, edit, edit, what? There's nothing to edit, it was all perfect. I mean, I was so fucking good. <laughs> all right. Well, if you don't, I won't edit anything then. I'll just put it all in there. We'll, we'll it's okay. Yeah, well, I don't look. You want to edit the part where I was picking my nose or something? It's okay. <laughs> all right. As long as I have your picture okay. for that. But yeah, this was fun, Gary. I'm glad that uh, we we do actually get along. And oh, I accept your apology, by the way, for being kicked out of stick cam the other day. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Well, likewise, accept your apology for calling me a propagandist. So. All right. Well, all right. We'll be on. Okay. We'll, so we'll, exchange we'll, notes. I'm still one up on you because you're, you know, two hours late on this interview. But anyway, that's a book. It's large. Well, you know, just to be fair, I called myself a propagandist as well. I, I, you know, as soon as you open your mouth to speak, 
You're speaking from a point of view, trying to get others to agree with you. Well, I know, but you know that word is loaded, okay? I mean, it's loaded with people trying to Only sell lies. People Not people trying means. to sell the truth that they believe in, but people trying to sell a lie. Your so propaganda that's a is pretty word. good, Gary. And I think you're actually secretly phantasmagorical, and you are a whole ons network uh, person as well. All right, I think we're done. Thank you so much, Gary, for coming on the show. Uh, we'll probably see you next time if we get enough responses, which we probably will. Yeah. Uh, Audio scary in in Mendham, in Mendham, New Jersey.